Daddy, the pills are starting to kick in, Daddy. Woohoo! That was that was Jimmy Hart's part, you know. He uh, uh, he 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 uh, decided he wasn't going to hold Hogan's weed anymore. He was just going to smoke it all himself. And then Sullivan was either describing how he was going to beat up Chris Benoit later tonight, or he was describing a really kinky fantasy he had. I couldn't tell. <laughs> uh, my take, my first takeaway from this is, you know, he is not even trying to hide the fact he's reading off off a teleprompter. He is looking at the floor. The yeah, he's looking at the floor the entire damn time. <laughs> I couldn't tell if he was reading off something or if that because because his eyes always did weird stuff during his promos. Well, yeah, stuff. but his head was clearly down. He was like looking at like the floor or yeah. like the bottom of like the camera tripod or something. <laughs> yeah, um, that's um, it was fun. brutal. Was it just me, by the way, or did Sullivan look like he got in some pretty good shape here? Yeah, it wasn't like flabby like he used to yeah. yeah he had some he almost had abs i don't know if that was a revenge body trying to show uh, nancy it's like hey look what you left but <laughs> i don't know up next by the way we get uh conan defending the u.s title against el gato el gato looks like somebody's uncle chewy wanted to cosplay as tiger mask <laughs> uh it's Conan's actually, in full lucha mode here by the way <laughs> oh yeah he comes out in like a like a half mask kind of thing that he takes it like a Vader mask almost that he takes off before the match. El Gato, by the way, is actually Pat Tanaka under a hood. He'll be in WCW as like a hundred different things for like the next couple of years. <laughs> yeah, they were. Why was that always that they were like, crap, we need something for Pat Tanaka. Put him in a mask. <laughs> like, and then they switched him back and forth. It's like one minute he's Japanese, one minute he like here he's Mexican. It's like, what? what is Pat Tanaka? <laughs> I assume he's Japanese. He also, he is Japanese. He also yeah. debuted Goldberg's theme. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird factoid. Google it, by the way, if you guys want to know. His, that, was, that theme was, was his in WCW before it was Goldberg's, and that's um, something we can never, ever forget. Uh, hashtag never forget. But uh, the match was okay, not terrible. Conan dumps Gato off the top and then pins him with a flip over uh, jackknife cover to retain the title. Uncle Dave and I. Was that like an Alabama slam thing, too? Uh, I think I think so. Yeah. And then he just kind of like flips over with the legs for the pin. I mean, it was it was okay. The match was, you know, not terrible. But who gave a damn about El Gato? Me and Uncle Dave both gave it uh, two stars. What do you say? I went a little higher. I went three because I thought it was a really fun match. It and was. it also reminded me of how good Conan really is. You forget that at times. Yeah, Conan really kind of, he joined the NWO and kind of, you know, gave up. After well, hold on. You for, don't forget about the pit stop he makes with the Dungeon of Doom. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. A Dungeon of Doom for life, Vato. I don't understand that whole thing. About he joins them, but he joins them as like a hardcore cholo. And I'm not like a dark <laughs> character or something. <laughs> like, what the hell? Yeah, that oh, was um, unique. Well, remember, Big wasn't Big Bubba a part of the dungeon? Yeah, but he definitely he started getting a little. You'll see it in this actually. It gets a little bit darker. Like he comes out in this one, like you know, not to get ahead, but he comes out in this one like a trench coat and looks like a like he's trying to be like a little goth maybe, like on the borderline. Well, he yeah, he's definitely <sighs> darker, but he looks like a biker. Like, why Why does right. the Dungeon of Doom want a motorcycle? <laughs> like, somebody who would show up at Sturgis, basically. For the same reason they want a Cholo. I don't know. Just... <laughs> they want to be They want to be harder, I guess. I don't know. Uh, mean Gene Okerlund interviews Sting backstage about his upcoming match against Lord Steven Regal. Both men talk about how Regal is sissy and prissy. And... Sting comes really close, in my opinion, to making a bunch of anti-English gay jokes. Yeah, I was like, I was like, is he put? It's like, it sounds like he's getting almost like borderline homophobic here. Can't tell, but and then he, yeah, because he was like, I don't know if that's how they grow men over there in England, but right here in America, we grow men different, and whatever. And it's like, um, and, and he like stops short of. He was like, oh, I can't say this on TV, Gene. You take it for a minute. Yeah, he tells Gene to say it. <laughs> You say it? Uh, no. Well, and then at the end, uh, Sting claims that he's going to straighten Regal out. 
My first Ooh. takeaway from this, by the way, is this is before he was reborn. So, <laughs> I yeah. mean, <laughs> I I don't know, man. But yeah, so it was it was funny that he cut the promo that way and then said he was going to straighten him out. I'm like, hmm, don't know what that means. If it's innuendo, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, now we get Diamond Dallas Page taking on Marcus Alexander Effing Bagwell. Nine minutes, 39 seconds. It's for the Lord of the Ring. Uh, that's the yeah, ring you win uh, in Battle Bowl, right? Or am I wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, clearly, uh, it was done in May, like the previous month. So clearly a jab at King of the Ring. You know, I mean, yeah. not too subtle, but, you know. Yeah, well, well, who who's the winner and who's the loser here, Greg? Because one gets a ring and then one has to dress, has to cosplay like they're on Game of Thrones. <laughs> hey, but let's be so. fair here. 1996, that Lord of the Ring was DDP and look what he went to do. 96, the King of the Ring was Austin. Look what he went to do. So that's arguably yeah. the best year ever. So, yeah, yeah right. Uh, I would say one of the last matches where Bagwell looked really good. Yeah, I looked decent. Oh, well, hold know. on. Who's in there with him? Yeah, but I'm just... I don't care what anyone says. I still feel like DDP is not getting enough credit for how good he is. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, the action start, starts hot and keeps up a decent pace throughout. DDP finally hits a diamond cutter for the win. Uncle Dave gave it two and a half stars. I gave it an even two. I gave it two as well. Yeah, I thought it was. It was I thought it was fun. I'm not going to say it was good, but it was not like a snooze fest. Right. It's the best Marcus, I can say. When he was Mar- I mean, when he was buff, he was fine. The stuff. Yeah, he was. He was. He was fine. But I think when he was Marcus Alexander Bagwell, I feel like he 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 was pretty decent. You feel the same? Yeah, I feel it. This is going to sound weird, but I think he worked better with Riggs. Yeah, who went on to do absolutely nothing. And I'm not saying that like you want to talk about. He went on to the flock and he had that epic R a few with R V D and ECW. What the hell are you talking about? Oh. Well. <laughs> Raven took his eye. <laughs> that was something Raven actually said. Um he didn't he actually kind of fought against Riggs a little bit being in the flock, not because of Riggs himself, but said he said he didn't want any quote unquote retreads in the flock. Uh up next, man, is by far uh, the match of the night. Dean Malenko defends his cruiserweight title against r- the debuting Rey Mysterio Jr. They get plenty of time, 17 minutes, 50, 50 seconds. As I said, this is Rey's WCW debut, and a hell of a debut it was. Mike Tenay is on commentary for this, of course, because he's the foreign star analyst. Is that is that politically incorrect to call them foreign stars? I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. He's I don't, not from America. I'm, well, I don't he is American. Think so. he How about American? international? Was, How about international stars? That's what they call them. Yeah, there, there you go. He was international. I mean, Mike can I just say, by the way, if if Shawn Michaels and 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 Bret Hart didn't happen, this would be the match of the year. Oh yeah, this this <laughs> this was really good. Um, in the finale, Mysterio hits a couple of Frankensteiners, but the third time, Malenko catches him and powerbombs him pretty hard, and he uses the ropes for leverage to pin him and retain the Cruiserweight title. Uncle Dave gave it four stars. I gave it three and a half. What say you? Maybe it's just me, but I thought this match was damn near perfect. I said it was a solid five. I thought this was epic, man. I enjoyed, and I can't name off the top of my head what they were, but I, I mean... Not saying this wasn't great and I didn't enjoy it because I did. Um, I feel like they had some better matches later on, maybe. But oh, definitely. But you have to watch. take into account this is his first time here. It's a huge showcase. Malenko was in full on, just great mode. Oh yeah, I, I said fantastic. This, I said it was nonstop action. I felt like it never stopped. Like from the beginning, like it started out like just hot, never stopped. Right. Well, and. Malenko doesn't get the credit he deserves, mostly because I mean, his hot his hot run was really in WCW. By the time he got to WWE, he didn't really do much, and he didn't have the right opponents to work with most of the time. Um, but yeah, Malenko deserves more credit than he gets, I think. And one criticism for Ray was that he was still kind of he was fresh off of his his you know stuff in Mexico and ECW. 
So he was still in lucha mode where, you know, it's like move, 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 very little selling. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like I give points for that because that's how it is, like, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I thought yeah, like I, Malenko countering with like all of his technical stuff. I thought this was a masterpiece. Oh, it was. These two, I, I think these two were like the perfect opponents for one another. They always made magic in the ring together. Uh, I think um, when you ask who the greatest cruiserweight of all time is, it's one of these two, easily. I would give it to Ray, not uh, like ten out of ten times. Somebody who did not make magic up next was Lex Luger. <laughs> He's with me and Gene Okerlund getting interviewed for his match. I will say, I think he cut one of the better promos I've ever heard from him right here. He says that the giant thinks he's invincible, which is in Lex's favor, because when men think they're invincible, they make mistakes. I thought that was a No, that's a good line. Uh, My thing here is, like, he kept going high pitch, low pitch. At times, I had to turn up the TV to hear what he was saying. I feel like he kept dipping out. Yeah, that was... That was my thing with Macho Man promos, because Macho Man would start out like this, and then he started yelling! Yeah, like, exactly. Oh, dude. But uh, Lex says that he's got one belt around his one uh, around his waist, he's got another belt on his shoulder, and God willing, after tonight, he'll have another belt over the other shoulder. And then Gene says, I'm going to have a belt after all this is over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to also point out, by the way, his face turn came, I feel like it came out from out of nowhere. Like uh, he was in the Dungeon Luger. of Doom. Jimmy Hart was his manager. Then he wasn't. So now he's feuding oh, with yeah. him. And, I mean, I know yeah, how it happened. Years. Like, like Sting kind of turned him good, but like, it felt like it just came out of nowhere. Yeah, it was what it was, man. That was WCW for you. And that was a lot of Luger's career. I feel it was like face heel, face heel. Like, wait, 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 wait what? Am I supposed <laughs> to cheer for you now? Well. I mean, they had to. He would stay face until the finger poke could do. By the way, well, he was um, he was a face, but at the same time, it was like, should we be cheering this guy here in uh, 1990? Well, actually, later this year, because uh, during like the War Games time, because of how he was treating Sting. You remember? Because yeah. like he's like distrusting of Sting. And then Sting proves that, you know, he was like, Sting is like, well, I had your back this whole time and you couldn't believe me when I told you something and blah, blah, blah. And then he's like crawling on his knees. He's like, please, Sting, forgive me. Like, so Luger just kind of proved to be, Luger proved to be kind of an ass and not a good friend. But we'll get to all that later in the night as well. Up next is by far and away the worst match of the night. Big Bubba Rogers with Jimmy Hart, because they're still part of the Dungeon of Doom, taking on John Tenta. The only shining light from this match was it was only 5 minutes, 24 seconds. So my first God. note, and this is what we just said. First of all, my like, oh, good Lord, the Dungeon of Doom. My second note was, <laughs> why the hell is uh, Big Bubba looking like a goth biker? <laughs> yeah, he. like I said, man, he looked like he came straight out of Sturgis. <laughs> But apparently the Dungeon of Doom had kicked the shark, now just going by John Tenta, out of the group for accepting a match against stablemate The Giant. And then, for some reason, the biker-looking dude, Big Bubba, decided he's a barber now, and he cut off half of Tenta's hair. But, like, half of his hair... They had a barber in the damn stable! (laughs) Uh, No, Greg, you can't have him cut the hair, because then they could get sued. I don't know. This is stupid. So freaking dumb. But check this note out. He cut half of his hair. He perfectly shaved one half of his skullet off. And Tenta left it that way. It's he has like, like a long promo on Nitro. Says he's going to leave it to remind himself of why he hates them and all that. And... You're going to walk around looking like a freak. <laughs> because you need a reminder of why you hate someone. He was just can, in the Dungeon of Doom. Is this really a stretch? <laughs> I, well, can't, can't you just look in the mirror at your bald head and be like, I had to shave my head because of that a-hole. But no! No, because that wouldn't make sense, you idiot! Oh, yeah, gosh. What am I thinking? This is the Dungeon of Doom we're talking about. Where am I? There are no Hulkamaniacs here! Gosh. Uh, the match ends with Jimmy Hart on the apron, 
with his back to the action. Bubba dives 